All right, all right, all righty, everybody. So what's going on? Peace and power. Peace and power elevation. So all you beautiful, beautiful people out there, this your girl Tiffany coming through here live in effect. Today's topic, I am going to be dealing with Bish Maurice Bishop. Maurice Bishop was a prime minister of Grenada during his time in the 70s, always up, up to the early 80s. Now, during the time Grenada was uh, going through a lot as far as um, economic issues and, of course, political corruption and things of that nature. And so also the United States had something to do with as far as being interfering with Grenada. So before I get into um, Maurice Bishop, I want to go into the history about Grenada just for a little bit and then talk about the Grenadian people and whatnot. OK, so let me go ahead and get started. And uh, thank you guys for subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell. If you guys want to share my channel, you're more than welcome to do so. Make sure you check out my other contents and make sure you uh, share my other contents on there as well. But again, I want to thank you guys for doing that. All right, let me go ahead and get started. So I'm on the website Wikiwine. Okay, as you can see. So let me pull it up right here. Now, let's talk about the country Grenada. As you can see, this is the flag. This is the Grenadian flag right here. All right. And so, so the motto is every conscious of God, we aspire, build and advance as one people. Hell, Grenadia. Okay. And of course, I think this is another flag. So, right here, it says Grenadian Creole French. Right. Now, they speak Creole French and also they speak English as well. It, it is an island in the West Indies in the Caribbean Sea at the southern end of the Grenadies or Grenada's island chain. If I'm saying it right, Grenada or Grenadia consists of the island of Grenada itself. The two smaller islands is Car Caracu and Pite and Martinique and several small islands which lie to the north of the main island and are a part of the Grenad uh, Grenadines. It is located northwest of Trinidad and Tobago, northwest of Venezuela, and southwest of St. Vincent and the, and the Grenadines. Its size is 3348.5 square kilometers and it had an estimate population of 112,523 in July of 2020. Its capital is St. George. Grenada is also known as the island of spice due to its production of nutmeg and maize crop. Before the arrival of the Europeans in the Americas, Grenada was inhabited by the indigenous people from South America. Christopher Columbus sighted Grenada in, in 1498 during the third voyage to the Americas. Following several unsuccessful attempts by Europeans to colonize the island due to resistance from the residents, island Caribs, French settlement and colonization began in 1649 and continued for the next century. On February 10th of 1763, Grenadia was ceded to the British under the Treaty of Paris. British rule continued until 1974, except for a brief French takeover between 1779 and 1783. However, on March the 3rd, 1967, it was granted full autonomy over its internal affairs as an associate state. And from 1958 to 1962, Grenada was part of the Federation of the, of the West Indies, a short-lived federation of British West Indian colonies. Independence was granted on February 7, 1974, under the leadership of Eric Gary, 
who became the first prime minister of Grenada of the sovereign state. The new country became a member of the Commonwealth with Queen Elizabeth as head of state. In March of 1979, the Marxist-Leninist New Jewel movement overthrew Gary's government in the bloodless coup d'etat and established the People's Revolutionary Government headed by Maurice Bishop as prime minister. Okay, so just want to get into that. Um, and here's the etymology the origin of the name Grenada is obscure, but it is likely that Spanish sailors named the island for the Andalusian city of Grenada. It carried at least two other names during the age of discovery. Okay, all right, so just get into the brief history now. Let's go down to the uh, French colony in 1649, a French expedition of 203 men from Martinique, led by Jacques Del Du Parquet, found, founded a permanent settlement in, on Grenada. They signed a peace treaty with the Korea chief, Karane, but within months, conflict broke out between the two communities. This lasted until 1659 when the island was completely subjugated by the French and the indigenous people who survived either left for neighboring island or retreated to remoter parts of Grenada where they ultimately disappeared during the, during the 1700s. Warfare continued during the 1600s between the French on Grenada and the Caribs of present day Dominica and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. All right. And it says the French named their new colony La Grenade. The economy was initially based on sugar cane and indigo worked by African slaves. So let's go down to where they talk about the British colonial period. OK, so Grenada was formally ceded to Britain by the Treaty of Paris in 1763. The French recaptured the island during the American Revolutionary War at the Comte de Astang, won the bloody land and naval battle of Grenada in July of 1779. However, the island was restored to Britain with the Treaty of Versailles in 1783. A decade later, dissatisfaction with British rule led to a pro- French revolt in 1795 to 96, led by Julian Fedion, which was successfully success, successfully defeated by the British. All right. And so I just want to stop right there because everything else is going to go into, it's going to be part of the story about Maurice Bishop and all of that. So I just wanted to give a little background about the Grenadi about the island of Grenada, and also I want to talk about the Grenadian people real fast. So let's look at let's look up the uh, Grenadian people. Oops! Oh, that's the wrong one. Hold on. All right, so right here, Afro Grenadians. All right, so the Afro Grenadians. Afro Grenadians are Grenadian people of largely African descent. This term is not generally recognized by Grenadians or indeed Caribbeans. They usually refer to themselves simply as Black or possibly Black Caribbean. The term was first coined by African Americans, history professor John A. John Herrick Clark in his piece entitled A Note on Racism in History. The term may also refer to a Grenadian African ancestry. Social interpretations of race are immutable rather than deterministic and neither physical appearance nor ancestry are used straightforwardly to determine whether a person is considered a black Grenadian. According to the According to the 2012 census, 82% of Grenadians' population is Black, 13% is mixed European and Black, and 2% of 
Indian origin. Europeans are less than 1% of the population. So in this case, Europeans are the minorities. All right. So now let's go into the history when we talk about slavery. So on March 17, 1649, of course, I read about that. The French, the French expedition of 203 men. All right. So by 1700, Grenada had a population of 257 French whites and 53 colors with 525 enslaved Africans to work on a three sugar estates and 52 indigo plantation. It then goes on to say more than half a century later when Grenada was captured by the British during the Seven Years War and formally ceded to Britain by the Treaty of Paris, the English began to begin to import their own enslaved African for use of their cotton, sugar, and tobacco plantation. It is believed that most of the enslaved who were imported to Grenada embarked from Nigeria, specifically Igbo and Yoruba, more than 37,000, 34% of the enslaved people of the island and Ghana Fante people, more than 18,000, 19% of the enslaved people of the island. To a lesser extent, enslaved people were also imported from Senegambia, more than 5,000, 4.9% of the slaves of the island. And Guinea, Sierra Leone, more than 12,000, 11% of the enslaved people of the island. Windward Coast, more than 14,000, 13% of the enslaved people of the island. Bot of Benny, might more than 5,805.4% of the slaves of the island. Congo, specifically Congo and Angola, the enslaved people of Central Africa number more than 12,000 people. 11% of the enslaved of Grenada. Many of the enslaved people were also Mandika. The first British census of Grenada in 1700 recorded 525 enslaved and 53 free from slavery living on the island. Julian Fedion, a mulatto plantation owner of the Bevel, 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 yeah, Bevelder estate in the St. John Parish led a violent rebellion against British rule on the night of March the 2nd, 1795. Clearly influenced by ideas emerging from the French Revolution, especially the conventions, abolition of slavery in, in 1794. Fedon and his troops took control of Grenada except the parish of St. George, the seat of government who afterward freed the enslaved people who participated in the rebellion. The struggle of the enslaved for their rights continued for a year and a half between March 1795 and June 1796. Until the British regained control of the island, the British as a punishment for disobedience and rebellion executed the alleged leaders of the rebellion. However, Fadon was never captured. Slavery in Grenada was finally abolished by a British law in 1834, and all enslaved people were freed by August the 1st, 1838. And then also it goes down to talk about religious groups. So most black Grenadians are Christian with the large groups being Roman Catholics and Angelicans. There is also a Muslim minority of black Grenadian. And of course, it talks about um, the no noble black Grenadians. As you can see, Malcolm S. mother was from Grenada. Okay. His mother was Grenadian. And his father was African American. So his mom, yeah, so his mom was um, from the Caribbean. Okay. So here's the reference. And here's the link at the bottom. All right. So now I got that out the way. I'm going into the history. Somebody put 
his grandma worked for the UNIA. Yeah, because, it, and, and plus, you know, his family was part of UNIA, his father, his mother, they were all part of, um, they were all part of the UNIA, um, Ibibo. So, you know, his family, that's how he was raised. He was brought up on that. So by his father being a pastor, he was also a follower of Marcus Garvey. And his mother was the same way, too. So it was already in him. So it, that black nationalism was already born in Malcolm. But I'm glad that you brought that up. Thank you, brother. Yup. You're right. All right. So let me go ahead and get started on Maurice Bishop. Who was Maurice Bishop? So, this is the picture of Maurice Bishop. I know you can hardly see that, but that's him. Okay. So, Maurice Rupert Bishop, he was born on May 29, 1944, and he died on October 19, 1983. He was a Grenadian revolutionary and the leader of New Jewel Movement a marxist Leninist party which sought to prioritize social economic development, education, and black liberation that came to power during March 13, 1979. Revolutionary removed Eric Gary from office. Bishop headed the People's Revolutionary Gov Government of Grenada from 1979 to 1983 when he was dismissed from his post and executed do during the coup by Bernard Cole leading the upheaval all right so his biography is of course like i say he was born on may the 29th 1944 on the island of aruba then a colony of the netherlands as part of the netherlands antilles his parents rupert and Amet bishop came from the northeast of the island grenada where his father earned only five british prince or pence per day at the end of 1930 to improve his financial position he moved to work in the oil refinery on the islands of aruba with his wife element okay so during his childhood adolescent until the age of six maurice was raised in aruba with two older sisters Anne and maureen in 1950, his father took the family back to Grenada and opened a small retail shop in the capital, St. George. Maurice was sent to the study at the Westland Elementary School, but after a year transferred to the Roman Catholic St. George Primary and High School. At the age of nine, Maurice was teased because of his height, which made him look much older. As an only son, his father pushed his education and expected much of him. He expected perfect grades from him, not on not 95, but 100 percent. And when the family purchased a car, his mother expected him to walk to school like the others. All right. For his, his secondary education, Bishop received one of the four government scholarships for the study of the Roman Catholic Presentation Brothers College. He was elected president of the student council of the discussion club and of the history study group along with editing the newspaper student voice and participating in sports he later recalled here i had much interest in politics history and sociology he also established contacts with students from the angelican grenada boys secondary school his own school's competitors he was an ardent supporter of west indy Federation established in 1958 and the ideas of Caribbean nationalism. He also recalled the great interest in 1959 Cuban revolution aroused in him. Bishop recalled, in fact, for us, it did not matter what we heard on the radio or read in the colonial press. For us, it comes down to the courage and le legendary heroism of Fidel Castro, Che Guevara. Nothing could overshadow 
overshadow this aspect of the Cuban Revolution. In those years, Bishop and his colleagues became interested in reading the works of Julius Nare and Franz Fanon. In 1962, Bishop graduated with a gold medal for his outstanding ability. Shortly before graduate graduation in early 1962 bishop and his youth leader from grenada boys secondary school bernard card created the grenada assembly of youth fighting for truth designed to bring the island youth to political life in a debate over pressing issues members gathered on friday in st george's main square and arranged open political debates among the people both friends and enemies celebrated his charisma and good auditory skills including his skillful use of humor in his speeches so so as you can see throughout his years he was always active he was always very political and his political interest came about when he was young because he was always in debates and the debate was consist of issues regarding to Grenada all right so over time that sparked his interest and he wanted to run into politics hmm. but everybody know that politics is a dirty game it's a dirty game regardless of what your position is whether you be a mayor whether you be a president whether you be a governor whether you be an art bishop whatever your position is it's a dirty game to be played and it requires a lot of machiavellianism but that's another topic though machiavellianism goes into all the dark psychology and all of that stuff and yeah the little 48 laws of power let's just put it like this the name Machiavellianism come from Niccolo Machiavelli. Niccolo Machiavelli wrote a book called The Prince. So the Prince book was the 48 Laws of Power before there was a 48 Laws of Power. Get it? Okay. So Machiavellianism was the, was the name that was given to honor Machiavelli. So basically it deals with how to bring about manipulation and power and how to uh, bring about some sense of control and things of that nature. So that's what Machiavelli Machiavellianism is, is how to gain power, how to gain order, how to have prestige how to have wealth. So it's a dirty game you have to play. You have to get your hands dirty when you're in politics. Whether you a good guy or you're a bad guy, it doesn't matter. You're still going to have to do some things that you may not be comfortable with, that you may not, that you may feel it's against your own will, but y'all do whatever you can if you're trying to win. If you're trying to uh, make sure that your country, your land, or your government is prospering. So it's a very dirty game to play. If you're trying to get resources, build your economics, gain social order and all of that, you got to play dirty. So let me go ahead and get on to the next. All right, so... I'm gonna skip some of this because I don't want to read too much, but let's go down to let's go down to um it says from 1967 to 1969 bishop worked on his thesis constitutional development of grenada but left the job because because of disagreements with the supervisor in assessing the 1951 disturbance in 1969 he received a law degree and became one of the founders of the legal aid office of the west indies community in london's natty hill gate 
This was volunteer work, and his main source of income came from work as an auditor of additional taxes on the British civil service. During this period, he corresponded with friends and developed a two-year plan of activities upon his return to Grenada. The plan called for temporary withdrawal from participation in political activities and his work as a lawyer to co-create an organization cap capable of taking power on the island. All right. So, and then it goes on to say, return to Grenada on December 1970, Bishop gave legal defense to striking nurses at St. George General Hospital who hoped to improve the living conditions of patients. He was arrested along with 30 other protesters. All, all were acquitted after a seven month trial. In 1972, Bishop helped organize a conference in Martinique that discussed and strategized actions for liberation movements. The philosophies of Julius Nare and Tanzanian socialism were guiding elements for the movement for assemblies of the people which Bishop had organized after the election of 1972. Bishop and co-founders, Ken Brick, Braddix, and Jacqueline Kreeft were interested in steering map towards construction of popular institution center in villages to facilitate broad participation in the country's affair. In January 1973, MAP merged with the Joint Endeavor for Welfare, Education, and Liberation to form the New Jewel Movement. Bishop shared the leadership as Joint Coordinating Secretary with Unison White Man. All right, so let's look at a little bit of information about the Jewel Movement. Okay. All right, so the Jewel, the new new joint endeavor for welfare, education, and liberation was, of course, the Mar Marxist Lenin Vanguard Party in the Caribbean island nation of Grenada that was led by Maurice Bishop. It was established in 1973. Uh, its issue issue is manifesto prior to the granting of independence to Grenada in 1974. The movement took control to the country with a successful revolution in 1979 and ruled by decree as the People's Revolutionary Government until 1983. Okay. So it was formally established on March 11, 1973 as an alliance of the Joint Endeavor for Welfare, Education, and Liberation, Organization for Revolutionary Education and Liberation, the Movement for Assemblies of the People, led by young lawyer Maurice Bishop. The NJM's initial manifesto was largely drafted by MAP's major intellectual Franklin Harvey, who had been heavily influenced by the writings of C.L.R. James from 1973 to 1979. So the NJM was an opposition political party active in Grenada during the 1970s. The political situation in Grenada became increasingly polarized and violent. For the 1976 gen general election, the organization formed an electoral coalition known as the People's Alliance with the Grenada National Party and the United People's Party. However, the alliance lost to the ruling Grenada United Labor Party in elections which were branded fraudulent by international observers in the late 1970s, the NJM formed the National Liberation Army, also known as the 12 Apostles. Okay. So of course they launched a revolution against uh, Eric Gary while he was out of the country. So they gained control of the military barracks, radio station, government buildings and police station in the country. And Maurice Bishop then suspended the Constitution and announced that the NJM was now a provisional revolutionary government, okay, which is the People's Revolutionary Government with himself as a prime minister, all right? After the revolution, the 
the NJM described itself as Marxist Leninist Vanguard Party. The party did not consider itself to be a communist party because it did not believe that neither the NJM or Grenada had reached a level of development where it would be possible to achieve communism. The NJM pr pursued its policies to reach a point where a communist party could be formed, but considered itself to be already due to the party not being led by a proletarian class and due to the low level of education in Marxist Leninist policy. Okay. So as you can see, they did not see themselves as communists. Now, one day I would go into the video about communism and why black people gravitated towards it. But to have a communist government means that everybody should be able to own a mean of production. Right. But Grenada is a small island. So by it being a small island in the Caribbean, they did not have a lot of resources there. So they were like underdeveloped. And so by them being underdeveloped, it was impossible to create a communist society. So they had so basically it was the ideology that was there and they were successful because they was able to overthrow the first prime minister and put Maurice Bishop on there. But as far as dealing with the economic system and the government itself, it could not be totally communist because they didn't have enough resources to operate as a communist party. All right. Um, shortly after taking power, shortly after taking power, the government looked to Cuba for assistance because Bishop had been refused aid and a meeting with American President Ronald Reagan. Cuban construction workers were brought in to assist in construction of a new international airport. The government formed the People's Revolutionary Army, granted them the power of arrest and search are invested in the members of the Royal Grenada Police Force. Okay, and during this period, the government did not hold election or produce a new constitution to replace the one they had been sus suspended. The NJM was the sole political party to exist. P position in the government and the new police force were only open to those who had established their support for Marxist principle. The leaders of the U.S. government and several other Caribbean nations expressed disc discontent of the NJM government, such as its relation with Cuba and alleged military expansion. So at that time, United States didn't really want to deal with countries that was really associated with Cuba because Cuba and United States were at odds with each other. And they were at odds to the point that people in the U.S. government could not go and travel to Cuba. But Asai Shakur ended up in Cuba because of the Black Liberation Army. They broke her out of jail and they said, all right, we're going to send you over here so that way you be secure and safe because we know the united states not gonna mess with you so and to this day she's still over there and the cuban government is still protecting her so the united states just can't come up in there and just like hey we're gonna get her and we're gonna bring her back to the states so that's how much power cuba has but let's continue so let's look at marxism so Marxism is a method of socioeconomic analysis that uses a materialist interpretation of historical development, better known as historical materialism, to understand class, relation, and social conflicts, as well as dialectical perspective to view social transformation. It originates from the works of 19th century German philosopher Karl Marx and Frederick Engels, as Marxism has developed over time into various branches and schools of thoughts, there is currently no single definitive Marxist theory. Okay. So now let's look at the overview. 
So the overview is Marxism seeks to explain social phenomena within any given society by analyzing the material conditions and economic activities required to fulfill human material needs. It assumes that the form of economic organization or mode of production influence all other social phenomena, including wider social relations, political institution, legal system, cultural systems, aesthetics, and ideology. These social relations together with the economic system form a base and superstructure as forces of production improve existing forms of organizing production be become obsolete and hinder further progress as Karl Marx observed. At a certain stage of development, the material produ product, excuse me, the material productive forces of society come into conflict with the existing relations of production or this merely express the same thing in legal terms with the property relation within the framework of which they have operated was it I, i'm not even gonna say that word but anyways form from forms of development of the productive forces these relations turn into their fitters then begins an era of social revolution okay and so these inefficiency manifest themselves as social contradiction in society which are in turn fall out at a level of class struggle under the capitalist mode of production this struggle materialized between the minority who own the means of production and the vast majority of the population who produce goods and services start with the cultural con your conjectural premises that social change occurs as results of the struggle between different classes within society who contradict one another and marxists would conclude that capitalism exploits and oppresses the uh, polarity. Therefore, capitalism will inevitably, inevitably lead to proletarian revolution. In a socialist society, private property as the means of production would be replaced by cooperative ownership. A socialist economy would not base production on the creation of private profits, but on the criteria of satisfying human needs, that is, production for use. All right, so I'm not going to go any further, but just getting to the definition of Marxism and whatnot. Okay. So going back to Maurice Bishop. All right, so it's a lot of information on here, but I am going to I'm going to go down with this uh premiership. In 1979, Bishop Party staged a revolution and disposed Gary, who was out of the country addressing. All right. And amongst Bishop's core principles were workers' right, women's right, and the struggle against racism and apartheid. Under Bishop's leadership, the National Women's Organization was formed, which participated in policy decision along other social groups. Women were given equal pay and paid maternity leave, and sex discrimin discrimination was made illegal. Organizations for Education, Center for Pop Popular Education, Healthcare, and Youth Affairs, National Youth Organization were also established. Despite its achievement, Bishop gov Bishop's government would not hold election and strife the free press and the opposition all right so it says the people's party revolution the people's revolution revolutionary army was also formed during bishop administration chris claimed that the army was a waste of resources and there were complaints that the pra was used as a tool to commit human rights abuses like torture and detentions of political uh, dissonance without trial. The establishment of voluntary mass 
organization of women, former youth workers and militia were presumed to make the holding of elections unnecessary. Moreover, it was believed that election could be manipulated by the input of large sums of money from foreign interests. Bishop has been quoted at length of the dynamic of democracy. There are those who believe that you cannot have a democracy unless there is a situation where every five years people are allowed to put an X next to some candidate's name and they return to return to being none people without the right to say anything to their government, without any right to be involved in running their country. Election could be important, but for us, the question is one of timing. We would rather, we would much rather see elections come when the economy is more stable, when the revolution is more consolidated. When more people have, in fact, had benefits brought to them, when more people are literate, the right of freedom freedom of expression can little can really only be relevant if people are not too hungry or too tired to be able to express themselves it can only be relevant if appropriate grassroots mechanism rooted in the people exists through which the people can effectively participate we talk about the human rights that the majority has never been able to enjoy a job to decent housing, to a good meal. These human rights have been the human rights for a small minority over the years in the Caribbean. And the time has come for the majority of the people to begin to receive those human rights for the first time. All right. So while Bishop introduced free help, free public health, illiteracy dropped from 35% to 5% and unemployment went from 50% to 14%. His weak point was tourism. He unpacked the old project of an international airport and asked his friend, Fidel Castro, for help. When Bernard Card arrested Bishop, protesters numbering 30,000 on an island of 100,000 gathered and even the guards joined the protest, resulting in the release of Bishop. But Bishop, knowing the determination of Card fashion, confided in a journal journalist i am a dead man all right so going down here it talks about his execution and arrest so in 1983 disputes among the party leadership occurred a military junta go i mean junta group within the party tried to make bishop either step down or agree to a power sharing agreement with Deputy Prime Minister Bernard Card. Bishop rejected those proposals and was eventually disposed and placed under the house arrest during the first week of October 1983 by Card. Large public demonstration throughout the island demanded Bishop freedom and restoration to power. During one demonstration, the Crowd free Bishop from house arrest, first in a truck, then by car. Bishop made his way to the Army headquarters at Fort Rupert, known today as Fort George. After he arrived, a military force was dispatched from Fort Frederick to Fort Rupert. Bishop and seven others, including cabinet ministers, were captured. Then a four man People's Revolutionary Army firing squad executed Bishop, three members of his cabinet, and four others by machine gunning them. After he was dead, a gunman slit his throat and cut his finger to steal his ring. The bodies were then transported to a military camp and partially burned in a pit. The location of their remains is still unknown. Partly as a result of Bishop murder, the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States and the nations of Barbados, Jamaica, appealed to the United States for assistance, as did Grenada's Governor General Paul Schoon and the U.S. President Ronald Reagan launched an invasion. <laughs> so, and it says... Family Bishop 
Maurice Bishop married nurse Angela Redhead in 1966. They had two children, Nadia born in 1969, John born in 1971. Angela immigrated to Toronto, Ontario, Canada with both children in 1981 while Bishop was still prime minister. He also fathered a son, Bidemir Lennon, with his longtime partner, Jacqueline Creep, who was Grenada's minister of education. Creep was killed alongside Bishop at the confirmation I mean, confrontation at Fort Ripper on um, October 19, 1983. After his parents' deaths, Vidimir joined his half siblings in Canada but was stabbed to death in a Toronto nightclub at the age of 16. Damn. So, what's the legacy? On um, May the 29th, 2009, Grenada's International Airport, formerly Point Salines International Airport, was renamed Maurice Bishop International Airport. Speaking at the ceremony, St. Vincent, Vincent and the Grenadines, Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez said this belated honor to an outstanding Caribbean son will bring closure to a chapter of denial in Grenada's history. All right, so here's uh, the information at the bottom. So th these are the reference. These are the external links. And also you can, it says Grenada 17, all right? So if you guys want to be able to look at more information about Bishop, Maurice Bishop, you can go on Wikiwine, right? And you can find out his biography. And I also got some more sources that I'm just going to share with you guys. I'm not going to like go through them, but you guys can check these sources out yourself that's related to the subject. No, I did not hear about the Cuba vaccine. No, I didn't. Mm -mm. The U.S. won't allow it in the States. I'm not very surprised by that. I listened to Black Marx's book today by Cedric L. Robinson. Very informative. Okay, I will have to look into that. By Cedric L. Robinson, Black Marx's book. I will have to look into that. I will have to check that book out for myself. All right. Okay, so. You guys can um, find his speech on, on YouTube. Just type in his name, Maurice Bishop, and you will see all his speeches that he has done. Okay. <laughs> All right, so here. Hmm. Let's see, interesting. Hold on. All right, so I have. I have some information here. Now, one of these books you guys can look for is called. It's called the New Jewel Movement, Grenada's Revolution from 1979 to 1983. It was written by Gregory, Gregory Sanford and edited by Diane B. Bindaheim of Bindamen. Yeah. So it was written in 1985, okay? And all you have to do, you can just type it up in Google and then you can be able to read it for free. So it's called The New Jewel Movement, okay? And of course, these are the table of contents. All right, so these this is the preface. And of course, uh, the first chapter will talk about the background of the revolution and how the movement came about, etc. Pretty much most of the things that I read off of Wikipedia. So 
if you guys want to look it up you guys can um again the title is the new jewel movement all right and then i have another one well i have three more no actually four more So this one is called Taylor and Francis Group Revolution in Grenada, an interview with Maurice Bishop. Arthur Maurice Bishop, the black scholar, and yeah, the black scholar, which is the source that came out on February 1980, Latin slash the Caribbean, um, page 50 to 58, published by Taylor and Francis. Okay. All right, so this just goes into the interview that he had did in the 1980s before his assassin assassination took place. All right. The next one. next one is Prime Minister Maurice Bishop before the storm. Dr. Kwando M. Kinsasha. And this one came out with, this was published online on April the 14th, 2015. But it was written in 1984. Okay. So and it's under the Black Scholar Journal of Black Studies and Research. Okay. So I'm not going to get into it, but I'm just showing you the article. And here's the article right here if you guys want to read it for yourself. This book right here is called The Grenada Revolution, Reflection and Lessons, edited by Wendy C. Grenade. The Caribbean Studies Series, Anton L. Alar and Shauna N. Jackson. Right, coming from the University Press of Mississippi says, slash Jackson. And it came out in 2015. So you guys, of course, this is the table of contents right here. The introduction, Grenada from 1949-1979. Grenada Socioeconomics Overview Part 2. A retrospective View from Richmond Hill, an interview with Bernard Card. Uh, Grenada once again revisiting the 1983 crisis and collapse of the Grenada Revolution. Remembering October 19, reconstruction a conversation with a young female NJM candidate member about her recollections of October 19, 1983. And then, of course, you got the part three. Grenada's non-capitalistic path and the derailment of a social democratic revolution. Hereborn A. Watson, C. L. R. James, and the Grenada Revolution Lessons Learned and Future Possibility. And it says Tennessee, Tennyson, S. D. Joseph. So I guess it's each individual who uh, have written a chapter in this book. So the challenges are for, for revolutionary changes or for revolutionary change in the Caribbean. Uh, that's part four. Now, part four will be the Grenada Revolution and the Caribbean left the case of the Guyana Working People's Alliance. And 
exploring transitions in party politics in, in Grenada, 1984 to 2013. The spirits and idea of Maurice Bishop are alive in our Caribbean civilization. All right, so you guys can check this book out. It was, it was written in 2015. It's called Grenada Revolution. All right, then. And this one's called In Nobody's Backyard, Maurice Bishop's Speeches from 1979 to 1983, Memorial Edition. Introduction by Richard Hart. Okay. Edited by Chris Searle. And this came out in 1984. All right. So you guys can um, check it out. All those books that I seen, you can uh check it out on amazon you can look it up from Bar barnes and nobles or if you you know amazon not only sell the physical copy but they also sell e-copies as well so you guys can go on there and check out more information if you guys want to learn and you know you want to look up for yourself all right so with that being said that's all i have for today um, and I just want to close out on this. Um, the reason why I do these videos because I don't have an answer to everything. I don't know everything, and I'm not going to ever claim like I know everything. So I would rather go and find something and be able to present it to the people so people have the right to be able to go and look it up for themselves. And they say, okay, I've seen this information somewhere. Somebody showed this information. Somebody showed this book before. Wooty wooty woo. So. If somebody want to go and read the books or read documents or whatever, the information is available and it has become available, available to people. So all they got to do is look it up for themselves. And it's not that hard to do. If you know how to use the Google engine or you know how to use the search engine, right? It's not hard for you to really find a lot of these stuff. It's right there, right in front of you. So I'm not going to sit here and play like I know everything and I'll use all these gigantic vocabulary words and be so articulate like I have all the answers because I don't. And I'm not going to sit here and say I do. All right. So with that being said. With that being said, I hope you guys have a good one. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share the video and uh subscribe to the channel and check out the contents and you know hit the notification bell whenever i come back on so until then i thank you guys so much for watching i thank you guys for being very supportive you know what i'm saying so until next time peace and power elevation be to all of you this your girl tiffany and i'm out